All right. So today we're going to start to talk about what does a quadratic equation Okay, <clears throat> so here's a quadratic equation. There's a bunch of forms that we're going to learn. So a general form looks like that. This is a factored form. This is a vertex or a standard form. Okay, so you could be looking at all of these. So I would give you a formula sheet that would have this in front of you at all times. Okay, so in grade 10, your graphing concepts in grade 10 all dealt with graphing lines, right? Uh, yeah. Functions was lines. So this is x squared. So last year your lines that you graphed were x's. Now we're graphing x squared. So that's why it's called a quadratic function, not a linear function like your grade 10. Okay? So do you notice how this all would form x squareds? This one would form x squareds once you multiply that out. Okay, but they all have x squareds in them. Okay, when we graph, we're going to find that everything has a vertex. So a vertex can either be a maximum or minimum. So, oops, I probably, yeah, maximum. That's what it would look like. You want to draw a little shape like that. And a minimum would be a vertex that would look like that. Okay, so that's a vertex. Then we're going to find out that there's going to be possibly some x intercepts. Okay, some other names for x intercepts are roots or zeros. Your calculator we'll be using the term a zero, okay? But it means an x-intercept, it means the same thing. But that's the word that we're gonna be finding on our calculator. So what that is, is this. What are the x-intercepts? What are the x-values there? Okay, we have an axis of symmetry. So when we look at a parabola, there's going to be a line that I could cut the parabola in half and I could fold it like a sandwich. Okay, that's what symmetry is. Okay, it's the same on both sides. It mirrors each other. And it's always going to be x equals and then it's going to be the value of your vertex at that spot. Okay. Then we're going to have a slope value. So a slope value is the A. You notice how every formula has an A. That's the slope value. Okay. If A is positive, our shape will look like that. If A is negative, our shape will look like that. Okay, so if A is positive, our U shape will open upward. If A is negative, our U shape will open downward. If A is something bigger than 1, your shape will change the looks like that. It will get narrower. And if A is something less than 1, like 0.5, it will widen the curve. Okay, 
When we talk about describing the graph according to domain, domain talks about the x values. What are the x values of this function? So when we describe it, we have to go in an order from left to right. And we use brackets. We'll put brackets on things. When we talk about range, that's all the y values. So how do I go in an order on a thermometer? I go from, what do I want to say, low to high. Okay, that's how we describe them. We say what's the lowest we are to the what's the highest we are. Okay, so here's kind of a visual of something that was graphed. So you can see the vertex is on a minimum. It's right at the bottom. It's the lowest point. So here's that axis of symmetry. What would be the equation for the axis of symmetry here? X equals 2. Do you see that? It cuts through 2. X equals 2 is the axis. Um, if I wanted to make the vertex a coordinate, do you know how to write that coordinate? 2 comma negative 4 is how you would write that. The x is 2, the y is negative 4. And the roots are on this, so this one is 4 comma 0. That's the coordinate of that root. And this one is at 0, comma, 0. Okay, so those are some things we're going to be looking for when we're graphing this. So that's the general stuff. Okay, so let's play around with our calculator here. Okay, you ready? Turn it on. On the bottom left, everyone, the on button. Good? Okay, can you hit this button called Y equals? There you go. Okay, I hit the button Y equals. If you have a bunch of stuff in there, can you hit the clear button, which is over here by, below the arrows, clear. Does anybody have something that looks like this above where their plot is highlighted? No one? Anybody have that? Do you have to hit Y equals. Got it? Okay. So if you have that, you're not supposed to have that on. I'd have to go up and enter it. Okay. I want to graph Y equals X squared. So Y equals is already in there. So I'm going to hit X. Here's my X button. Everyone sees the X button? X. And my squared button is over here. X squared. Everyone's good? X squared. Those are my buttons I'm pushing. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit zoom for a second here. The button zoom. And in this list, if I do a standard, it puts my grid as a 10 by 10. So I'm going to do a zoom 6. And so that puts my visual on a 10 by 10 grid. OK. So that means that's what I'm seeing. Is everybody else seeing that on their screen? That's what mine looks like. Okay, let's play around here. What if I wanted to see some points? Okay, I'm going to push this trace button. Did everybody get, like, I call it a mouse because it's a blinking cursor, like on a computer. Okay, so right now, zero, zero. I can move the arrows around, and it will move my mouse for me. So if you can practice moving left and right, move your arrows around a bit. Okay, 
I would like to tell my mouse to go somewhere specific. You ready? I'm gonna go one, enter. And it went exactly to the coordinate one, one. Okay, I'm gonna tell it to go to two. So I'm gonna hit two, enter. And now it's at the coordinate two comma four. Kaius, did you get caught up? Okay, hit Y equals. And then, can you hit this X and then this button squared? X squared. Yep. Okay, and then go zoom six. And it should look, your screen should look like this. Okay, um, so we just did one, one, we did two, four. Anybody wanna predict three comma, three comma nine, okay? And we could do the same on the other side, so like negative one, there is my point. Negative two, there's my point. Okay, I can also do this kind of thing over here is a table of values. So I'm gonna go, it's yellow. It's yellow, so I have to go second and then that button. And here's the coordinates of the points. Wait, where's the table of values? Second function graph, because it's yellow. Okay, and there's your points. One, one, two, four, three, nine. Those were my points. Okay, I'm gonna go second, quit. This is my home screen of my calculator. Okay, we're gonna graph this one now. So hit Y equals. Where's the quit? Second, and then right beside it. Second, quit. So every time, do you see how my quit is yellow? That means I have to push second function before I push that button if I want to quit. So if anything is yellow on your calculator, you're going to get there by pushing the yellow button second button first. Okay, can you go back to your Y screen? Your Y equals. Okay, I'm going to go negative X squared. Now, here's the thing. You've got to understand this about everything in your calculator. This button means negative. This button means to subtract something. Okay, they're different. Which one will I want when I want negative x squared? Mm -hmm. The one in the bottom. I call it the baby, baby negative, because it's smaller than that one, okay? Negative x squared. So if you had put subtract x squared, it, your calculator might tell you it doesn't work, something. Okay, I'm going to hit graph. And do you see something? So this is what I am seeing. Negative x squared. Okay, so what do you think? What happened? So then we can conclude a is negative, it will flip it. Okay, that's my conclusion. So if there's going to be a negative value in front of the x squared, this is going to flip that parabola. So it's going to open downward. Okay, let's jump to these two. Okay, I'm going to graph this one. So I'm going to go y equals... I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to put x squared and then subtract 3. So there I'm doing the big subtract button. Not the baby, the big one, the blue one. Okay, it runs good with the how to type. Graph. Okay, this is my calculator, so I drew it like that. Okay, 
Does anybody want to tell me what this coordinate might be right there? Okay, what do you think? Negative three. Yeah, zero, negative three. So can anybody describe to me with a word what happened after my original? What, what happened between here and here? In a word, it moved how? It moved down three. Okay, I'm gonna show you now how to actually get that point. So I want to understand what the vertex is. In this visual, would you say the vertex is a maximum or a minimum? What is this visually? A maximum? Is it on the very top or is it on the very bottom? It's on the bottom, so it's a minimum. So we're gonna practice this, you ready? Can you hit calculate, which is second trace? So second trace, because calculate is a yellow. Okay, so here's my list. Do you understand I'm gonna pick number three? It's a minimum, I'm trying to figure out what's the minimum. So I'm gonna enter. Okay, here's what my calculator says. Can you move your mouse to the left? Okay, so somewhere like that, my mouse, I moved it to the left. Enter. Okay, now I'm going to move it onto the right side. So there, I moved it right, right, right. Because I'm trying to tell my calculator, find it. It's between here and here. Enter, and now it says guess. So look at wh what I did. I said calculator, it's between here and here. Enter, and it gave me, this is essentially zero, negative three. Sometimes, I don't know why, it just doesn't give exactly zeros, but. Okay, let's type this one. So back to our y equals I'm going to change that to a plus 4. x squared is already in there. I left it, and then plus 4. Graph. There's my parabola. So this is what I'm seeing. So that's what I'm looking at. So what do we think happened physically in a word? It moved up four. Okay, so this is a number that is after. So when there's a number on the end, okay, that's what it happens. It moves up and down. Okay, let's try doing this. So this time I'm putting a number in the part that's squared. Okay, so let's see what happens. Y equals, let's just clear that. Clear. Bracket X minus two bracket, and then a squared symbol after that. Okay, everyone's okay with how to type? That's a subtract, not a negative, that's a subtract. Graph. There's my parabola. Any predictions on what that coordinate might be? Where did it move? Should we go trace? My prediction is that it's at two, so I'm gonna go two. Yeah, there's that point, two comma zero. I just made my mouse, okay? So two comma zero is that point. Okay, so what happened to this in a physical sense? Right, there's my original, and now I'm over here, so I moved right two. Okay. Can we make a last prediction without actually typing it? 
What do you think might happen on this one? It should move left three. A number after would move up down, but a number in the bracket goes left right. Okay? But did you notice that this does an opposite of what your brain sees? Right? Because this says subtract, but it actually moved it right. So that's not really what my brain thinks when I see subtract, I think left. But so let's put a star there and let's write opposite. That's moving opposite of what I'm thinking about. Okay. Let's change it up here. Okay. Y equals clear. Okay. This time, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to type in X squared. So that's just my normal. Now I'm going to type in 3X squared on the second. So I can have this thing graph multiple, t multiple things for me. Okay, so the normal and then this one. Okay, ready? Graph. So this is the normal and that's the new one. What happened? It got narrower. So I kind of am showing you, this is the y equals x squared, and then this is the y equals 3x squared. And I'm going to write that you told me it got narrower. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's leave the x squared in there. And let's clear the second one. I'm going to go bracket 1 divided by 2. Bracket 1 divided by 2 bracket. So I got my half. And then x squared. Do you understand that brackets are important? Because if I didn't, it would do 1 divided by 2x squared, which is not what I want. 1 half x squared. Graph. There's my normal. Then there's my new one. So this time, normal was first, and then the new one. So can we write that it got wider? Okay, <clears throat> let's make some conclusions. So if A is positive, then we're opening up. If A is negative, then we're opening down. If A is bigger than one, we would narrow. If A is less than one, <clears throat> then we would widen. <coughs> okay, if we had inside the brackets a subtraction, it would move right. If we had a number with the x and a plus, then it will move left. Okay, if we have a number at the end that adds, then we will move up. 
and the number at the end that subtracts, then we will move down. Okay, so that's how parabolas can move. Okay, let's practice a couple. Okay, so let's type this in. So y equals, get everything else out. Okay, can you write baby negative 2? That's a negative, so the baby negative. Bracket x plus 4 bracket squared plus 10. So you have to write all that in there. Make sure that's a baby negative symbol. Okay, graph. <clears throat> so there's the visual of it. Okay, so here is my rough sketch. This is what I'm kind of seeing. Okay, you know what? I don't really like that I, I can't quite understand. Am I looking at the top or should I need it a little bit bigger? So here's what we're gonna practice, changing your window. So can you hit the window button? I, okay, remember that I wanna see higher, right? I would like to see if I can see higher. So hit the window button. What would I change on this if I want to see higher? Y -max. My Y max. I'm going to go 15. I'm going to see it a little bit higher. So I changed the Y max to 15. And I'm going to graph. Okay. Now I know I can for sure see that top. Okay. Question one, what's the direction of opening? So this opens down. Okay, obviously because I graphed it, pre-calc reason would be because this number is negative, negative two. Okay, the vertex. So I would like to figure out what this point is. Is this point a maximum or a minimum? It's a max. Okay, so let's figure out what the maximum point is. All right, you ready? So we're going to calculate it. So we're going to push second trace. So we're going to calculate. So this is on the screen here, number four. Okay, you have to figure out where your mouse is. I'm going to move my mouse to the left. Okay, everyone sees where my mouse is? That's to the left. Enter. Now, I got to move it to the right. So I need to be on the right side of it. So move your mouse to the right, 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 a little bit. Enter. So now you've told your computer part, say, it's between here and here. Enter, negative four, comma, 10. Okay, so that's the vertex. Um, the axis of symmetry, your calculator can't tell you that. We have to understand that it's that line so I drew a yellow line here and that line would be called x equals because it's up and down you learned that in grade 10 an up and down line is an x equals and what x value do I end up going through negative four okay x intercepts so this is what I would like to know. I want this number and this number. Okay, you ready? I'm going to calculate. So second trace. Do you remember the name of an x-intercept? It had some other name that I said your calculator had. 
the x-intercept is called a zero. a zero. So go to that. Okay, so I'm going to find, let's go to this one first. Your mouse has to be on the left and the right. Can you move your mouse somewhere here, enter, and then somewhere here, enter? Does this make sense? I'm on the left-hand side of it, and then I'm on the right-hand side of it, and then you push enter again. So left. So I need my mouse on the left side of it. You right? On the right, enter, and then enter. Negative 6.24. Got that number? Okay, now let's get the other one. I'm going to be putting my mouse here and here. Okay, so to get this one, do you see I'm going to go left? right this is where i'm putting my mouse okay can you make sure you enter enter and then enter a third time i got negative 1.76 on that value Okay, I'm going to ask, does anybody need me to come see their calculator stuff? If it didn't work out, if they don't know where to put their mouse. Okay, let's play around some more with some y-intercepts. Okay, a y-intercept is where does it hit on this y-axis? So on my screen, I can't see it right now. So do you understand that it's gonna be down here, right? Do you see how my graph is moving? Somewhere down here, it will cross. Okay, that means how do I wanna change my screen? I would like to see what? More to the left, higher, more to the right, lower, lower. Lower. So let's go to our window. Because I know the answer already, let's go to the Y min. And can you go negative 30? I'm going to see lower. So negative 30, graph. OK. Now. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go trace 0, trace 0, enter. And there's my y-intercept. That's it. OK? Trace 0, enter. Okay, so there it is. That's where it crossed at negative 22. Is that matching what your calculator is saying? Okay, let's talk about the domain. So we said, describe it as how far left to how far right. So how much left is this going to go? Left, 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 left. So negative infinity. And then how far right, 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 right? Positive infinity. So that's what I was describing. It goes left to right. OK, range goes low to high. So what is the lowest we are? What's the height doing here? It's going down, 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 down. So negative infinity and what is the highest we got up to and it stops what's the highest 10 and on that one I'm going to put a square bracket
Okay, let's do one more and then that's it. So let's see if we can get our calculator working. Okay, go, y equals, let's clear it. X squared minus 4X minus 6. So I'm pushing the subtract button, not the negative button. Okay, do you remember that we changed our window? Okay, how do I reset my window just to start with the basic 10 by 10? Does anybody remember how to do that? Clear. Zoom. Which one was it in the zoom menu? Six. Yeah, number six, zoom, six, resets it for you. I mean, you can go manually change your window, but that's your fast way to just reset it. Okay, do we like what we see? Do you want to do any lower? Should we maybe lower that? Let's go the window. Y min. I'm going to go baby negative symbol 15. Graph. Okay, that's pretty good. I like what I see. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. I'm going to just put some important points on here. Yep. What if you get a zigzag? A zigzag? Then something went wrong in your typing. I don't know why it did. Okay, go to your Y equals screen. Okay. What do you have? Hold on. X squared and Subtract. Oh. Did you do a negative 4x? Yeah. You have to do a subtract button. 4x. Okay. And a subtract button with the 6. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so you pushed a negative symbol. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so here's my important points, right? So, direction of opening, it's up. Okay, we can visually see that. Why algebraically? It's because it's a positive x squared. The vertex, can you get me this coordinate? What is the name of this coordinate? Is it a maximum or a minimum? It's a minimum. Okay. So we're going to go second calculate, trace button. I'm going to go to option three because it's a minimum. Okay, your mouse needs to be on the left hand side of it enter move right 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 enter enter two comma negative ten so right so here's kind of what I did so this is me I moved left of it right of it and then I got it Whoops. I'm wrong. So two negative ten. Okay, the axis of symmetry would look like this. So x equals what is the x value? Everywhere on this line, what x value am I at? Two. Two. Okay, we're going to find the x-intercepts, so which option is that on my screen, on my menus? The zero. I'm going to be moving left and right. So to get this one, this is left of it and this is right of it. Left and right. Can you figure out that on your own? And then we'll pause and make sure we got it. Okay, y-intercept, so here is my y-intercept, oh, here's my y-intercept, how do I find it again, do you remember? Trace, zero, enter. I just tell my mouse to go to zero. You can always tell your mouse to go to exact x values if you know them, okay? So trace, 
zero made a negative six. Okay, what's the domain? So left and right is negative infinity to infinity. That's the same, it goes forever and ever. And what's the range? So the range is the lowest. What low height are we going to? Negative 10 is the lowest we ever get to. And then we go up from there. Does that make sense how I wrote it? Negative 10 to infinity. Okay, what point is symmetric to the y-intercept? Okay, you ready? There's my y-intercept. Do you visually see I'm looking for a point like that? That's the symmetric partner. Okay, I'll show you a pre way and I'll show you an applied way. Depends on where your brain wants to go. I'm fine with either. Okay, so we knew that here we were at a 2 on the x-axis. Okay, what is the distance to that point? 2. So what happens if I went 2 in the other direction? Where would I get to on the x scale? 4. And they have the same heights, right? They're the same height as each other. So that's a pre calc way. OK, here's the applied way. Applied way. I'm going to draw a line right at negative 6. How do I draw a line? I go y equals baby negative 6. Graph. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out what this coordinate is and it's called a intersection. Does that make sense? It's two things crossing each other. I'm going to first push my mouse, so I pushed trace. All I'm going to do right now is just move my mouse closer to that intersection. Okay, because there's actually two intersections, but I want the one over there. Second trace. And look at on our screen, it's number five. Okay, here's, it does it for you. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess, enter. And I got four, negative six. It just does it for you. Just go enter, enter, enter. So you'll have to hit enter, enter, enter three times. I didn't do anything, it just does it for you, so you just go enter, enter, enter. 